This is my simple explanation of what Power BI is, why you should care about it, and how do you go about learning it. Okay. Look, there's about 4 million people creating Power BI reports, apparently, and around 12 million users. So it's a big deal. It's getting bigger. More companies are adopting it. You know, we'll talk about briefly why. Why is it so good? And also, if you learn Power BI, you open up your career to more options. OK. Look, it's Microsoft's business intelligence platform. Wait, hold on a second. This is explaining it to anyone. That, that could mean anything. So what we're going to do, get rid of that. It's all about charts, numbers and data to help make decisions. OK, that's what Power BI is about. Now, it consists of two main components. There's Power BI Desktop, which is free, totally free. Okay, you can download it from powerbi.com. I'll put some links and stuff in the, in the description. You build your dashboards there. Okay. You can connect to multiple different sources, Excel files, SQL databases, access online data sources, multiple different sources, pull them together and add some calculations, build some charts and visuals. You know, it's a, a tool that's now in the hands of the business user. OK, so once we're happy with the report, we can click a little button called Publish. That saves it to a PowerBI.com service where the end user can access the report if you share it with them using their email address is the normal way. OK, or you can embed it in Teams and do a whole bunch of stuff like that as well. And there's more fancy advanced options. But this is the basic explanation. So, you know, in that online version, that's where you share, you can control access, you can centralize data that other people can then build off. You know, there's this single source of truth, or as I prefer it, trusted information. Um, you know, this is the holy grail of the, of the BI world. We're not really quite there, but it's a good step in the right direction. You know, why is Power BI so popular? cost. OK, it's a big deal. It's free to try. OK, that's pretty compelling price point. Um, but when you want to start sharing or viewing a report that somebody else has shared with you, you both need a license. It's called a pro license. It's 10 bucks each US. Um, and there's no way around that. You often see on forums people asking, how can I avoid you know, that cost? It's cheap, right? That's 10 bucks per person per month. It's it's not a lot of money in the scheme of organization reporting. Not-for-profits get a discount. I think it's about four US dollars. You'd have to check that. It's also already included in the Office 365 E5 license, which is the highest tier. So you may already be paying for it. Um, if you've got more than 500 staff or you need um, more pro, more sort of advanced features, then you might want to investigate premium which starts at around $5,000 a month. But for big organizations, it makes sense, OK? But really, you know, not only is that cost, which is insane, there's the ease and speed of creation. So it's a tool that's aimed at the business user. And rapid in iteration when you're actually building reports rather than sending off a whole bunch of requirements, waiting six months, getting something back and asked, is, is this what you need? OK, those days are gone. This is about the business users building the reports themselves in a real iterative way. And that might be it. It might be end at that point or it could be a, a thing that they could hand to IT who then sort of um, build a more robust version of it or scale it, whatever. But proof of concept or end result reporting can be done by the business users now, which is awesome. And really, you know, the coolest part of it is the visual interactivity. So you can click on different charts and they all interact with each other. And you really remove those bottlenecks of somebody sort of coming to you for, oh, can you give me that cut a slightly different way? Or can I see this for last year? You can just allow people to play about with the report themselves, which is brilliant. OK. So before I get into learning resources and how where I would recommend you start, Let's have a very quick run through. So this is Power BI Desktop. I've already pulled some data in using this section up here, which we all know is Power Query, but it's not named that. 
It's named get data and transform data, but everyone knows this as Power Query. This is also built into Excel, by the way, this functionality. And we can connect to all sorts of different data sources. If I click on this one, you get a massive list you can connect to, or an ever-growing list, okay? So here's the list. Folders, files, pulling data in from all these places. I've already pulled some data in, and I've loaded it to this thing called the data model. And you may hear the term star schema, but don't let it scare you. It's really about your tables with your facts and figures in, and then your tables with your dimensions or explanations or lookup values, as Excel users are used to. You know, you might have a product code, and in another table called the product table, you've got a definition of what that product is and how much it costs or whatever, okay? These are your sort of definition dimension tables. And you just create these links using drag and drop. For example, product ID, I've already linked up to product ID. That could be 50 million VLOOKUPs replaced. It's awesome, okay? Then you start building a report. And importantly, you should really build these things called measures. This is where DAX comes into the fray, okay? This is a DAX calculation. We're summing the sales amount column from the sales data table. This is all good, okay? So what do I do with this? Well, I can simply tick my measure, turn it into a card, and there's my total sales across all the years of data that I've loaded. I might want to click sales again as a bar chart, and this time I'll show it by, well, let's go customer group instead. So there we go, there's a nice little chart, customer group. Or I could show it, uh, I could show actual sales by year and month. So because I've got all these tables linked together, I can slice and dice and do all this awesome stuff, open this stuff up. Uh, sometimes you see charts that are presented in maybe not the best way, so by brand in the legend. I don't like that sort of stuff. Check out small multiples. Here we go. There's a beautiful, you know, easier to understand chart showing it broken down by category. And the brilliant thing is that when you click on these bits of the charts, everything changes. And as you saw there, I've even got a little tooltip built when I hover. Okay, check this out, hover over here. And I've even got a little map showing me a breakdown of the different elements, which I can zoom around and say, oh, look, there's no Western Australian restaurants and all the gift shops are in Adelaide. So you can build all this sort of interactive reporting and you can click on a particular month down here. And again, the numbers change. So all sorts of flexibility for the end user. To share this, I click publish. I can then share it from the browser version and I can embed it into PowerPoint. You can even embed it live into a PowerPoint slide. Let me show you. So here's my report sitting in the cloud. I can share it with people, send them a link, do all that sort of stuff. I can export this, I can analyze in Excel, I can embed it in a PowerPoint slide. Check this out. Here's my slide. It's live, it's interactive. I can even do the slideshow and it still works. Okay, it's still clickable inside the slide deck. I can hover over this. My tooltip should still pop up. There we go. That's pretty cool. Okay, all inside the PowerPoint slide. So all this sort of functionality is pretty awesome. So how do you go about learning Power BI? Well, in Power BI Desktop, there is some guided learning and training videos. They're not great because, and I say this because, it's not easy to find where you need to start. If I click training videos, okay, it just takes you to the YouTube channel and you just hit with, where do I even start looking? You can go for playlists, and there's some created playlists, okay? But it's not really a great place to start. Also, under guided learning, if I click that, it tends to take you into this sort of overall page where this, you know, your path to get started is embed Power BI Analytics. Well, that's an advanced feature. Consume, create, where do I even go to start? 
Now, what I would suggest is, and I'll put some links in here, there are some sort of, there are some tutorials um, getting started, creating the Power BI. There is this virtual workshop and training courses that you can attend. So there are useful places. What I'd recommend is you check out PBI guide slash resources, where I've got lists of books, um, YouTube channels, all sorts of useful resources, blogs, podcasts, third party tools that can help. Just start off here, perhaps find a, a channel that you like to follow. There are lots of, you know, training courses. My strong advice, check out who the presenter is. Are they a Power BI person? Okay. Do they have Power BI credentials? Follow them on Twitter. Check out them on LinkedIn. Are they always talking about Power BI or Excel or whatever course you're talking about? If they're not, then just maybe look for a different course. That would be my one comment, okay? You want somebody teaching you who is enthusiastic about the product and who wants to stay up to date. There's different price ranges for all sorts of people's pockets. I'm not going to recommend any specifics, but just look up who the presenter is. Right, I hope you find that useful. Does that give you some insight into what Power BI is? Let me know. Ask any questions in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.